So it's hard for me to give up speaking. Wow, I'm t- really loud. Um, and uh, I, I, I couldn't even think of what to take out of that. Wasn't that phenomenal? Did you guys enjoy that and appreciate that? And yeah, I, I will tell you about the message today. I'm going to talk for 10 minutes, so don't be scared. Those of you who looked at your watch. You'll get out before the Methodist. I know their pastor. He talks forever. I'm just kidding. He does, but he's a good guy. So I didn't watch this video before I wrote the sermon today. I knew they were going to talk about overcoming. So I just want you to watch it. We're going to do the first part, just talk about it, and then I'm going to talk about the second part. So today we're going to talk about, for just a moment, the heart of an overcomer. But before I do that, I want, you to, I want to do something really awkward for you. It's not awkward for me, but it's going to be awkward for you. Congratulations. I want you to tell the person next to you that God hasn't forgotten you. Would you just go ahead and do that right now? So no matter right now, no, let me make sure this is on. <laughs> so no matter right now, whatever's happening in your life, whatever's going on, God has not forgotten you. And some of you came today, you think, on accident. Some of you had a hard time getting here. You were debating about not going. By the way, the days that you really debate about not going to church are the days that God has a message for you. I've always felt like that's absolutely true. So here are reasons that we are overcome. Okay. First of all, sorrow and sadness. And you heard those stories. We're overcome. Some of you today are dealing with sorrow or with sadness. Number two, anxiety and worry. Our problems seem so big. We worry about the future. We worry about next. Number three, sin in our lives. Sometimes the choices that we make, we run from God and we struggle because we're running from God or we're making choices that are causing us to struggle. And then finally, We listen to the accuser. Now, I want to talk about this one for just a second. Right now, you're having a conversation. Your conversation might go something like this. I wonder what's for lunch. Some of your conversation might be, you know, that person. And you might be reliving. Some of you are having a conversation right now about how horrible a person you are. Or, listen, you have an accuser. Anytime that you find yourself critiquing and criticizing other people, you're allowing the accuser to influence you. And anytime that you're sitting and saying, you know, I'm lousy, I'm worthless, I'm not good at this, I'm not good at that, you're allowing the accuser to accuse you. Know that it's not good. And that you can choose how you think. And we're going to talk about, though, how then can we... How can we have the heart of an overcomer? Now, in the New Testament, this word overcomer is the same word for conqueror. And it was a really popular shoe in the 80s. I don't know if it's popular anymore, but I I had a pair of Nikes. We call them Nikes. I think in the Greek it's pronounced Nike or something, but, but we call it Nikes. And that word literally means to conquer, to defeat. And it's a battle term. Some of you right now are in a battle with one of those things I just talked about. You're you're maybe in a battle with sorrow right now or sadness. You're really struggling or maybe it's anxiety. It's just overwhelming and you feel like you are losing. All you do is worry and it's overwhelming. Some of you, there's a sin in your life. Maybe it's a drug addiction or alcohol or some other thing that you've allowed to dominate you and you feel overcome or it's just your thoughts you continually think of the negative you sit and critique others and criticize you you go through life and all you do is just critique everyone and everybody and you are miserable or you feel condemned so how do we develop this heart that then conquers instead of being conquered we conquer how do we develop this nike (laughs) heart number one We need to hope in trials knowing that Jesus overcame. One of the biggest things the enemy will do to you is take away your hope. Because when you lose hope, you lose looking ahead to the future and you begin to wallow in self-pity. Hope says something's going to change. God's going to do something. God's got this. Jesus said this to his disciples in John chapter 16. Do you now believe, Jesus replied, a time is coming, and in fact has come will you, where you will be scattered, each to your own home. So Jesus is saying to his disciples, in a few moments, 
You guys are all going to leave me. You will leave me all alone. You ever feel that way? Did you know they've done surveys? A third of married people are lonely. Some of the single people here are like, you mean a third of those people feel like I feel? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Or worse, because there's somebody there and they're not there. Jesus said, you'll leave me all alone. But then he said this, yet I'm not alone for my father is with me. I've told you these things, so in me you may have peace. Do you have peace today? In this world, you could possibly maybe have trouble. What word is there? In this word, you? Well, let's say it again, not like we're asleep. Okay, you ready? In this world, we? We will have trouble. It doesn't say might. Now, don't tell the TV preachers because they think you just love Jesus and he'll just make everything and everything will be fine. You'll go through life. Yeah, yeah, all right? You'll look like a, a, a toy from... It's a small world. In this world, you will have trouble. But here's the good news. This is why you can hope. But take heart. I have, past tense, I have overcome the world. First John, John says this to the early church. You, dear children, are from God and have, past tense, overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than than the one who is in the world. When you struggle and you feel like a failure and you feel like nothing's happening and nothing's moving forward, you need to say, hey, I've already overcome because of Jesus. He is with me. Number two, that's the part we're going to talk about. God is with you. In Jeremiah, it's a very similar word in the Hebrew. It means to overcome. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you. For I am with you and will rescue you. God, I don't feel like you'll rescue me. God, I feel like I'm in this fight, whether it's health or family or work. Maybe it's a struggle in your mind. Maybe it's discouragement or depression or a bankruptcy, a divorce, something in your life that seems overwhelming. And he says, I am with you. Sometimes you just have to say, God, I know that you're with me. I don't feel like it. Number three, overcome evil by doing good. This is one we forget. Because what happens is when we're overcome sometimes, we quit and we hide. And yet what we need so often when we're overcome by evil people and evil things and people who do things and things that happen to us and struggles in our lives, sometimes the best thing we can do is then go out of our way to help someone else to overcome. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, let him starve. Just making sure you're awake. Feed him. By the way, thank you all of you who brought canned goods today. We'll have that there until 4 o'clock today. If you want to fill that up, we're taking that to the sharing center to feed people who are hungry, who are struggling in our community. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. You're supposed to do that for enemies. How much more would you do it for somebody who you think has made bad life choices? In doing this, you'll heap burning coals on his head. By the way, two meanings for this. One was they carried their coals often with this V-shaped thing, a metal thing on their head. So some people felt like, oh, that's a blessing. Other people have translated this and said, oh, no, it's going to burn in them. So, so like you're doing something nice, like I hope this gets them, you know. But that's not what it means. It's the idea that when you bless somebody, listen, even that person that you know is gossiping behind your back that comes up to you and says, hey, how you doing today? And you want to say, I'm good, but you're a jerk, right? <laughs> bless them. Go out of your way to be a blessing. Go out of your way to feed them. Go out of, out of the way just to be a blessing. That doesn't mean you need to hang around them. <laughs> you don't have to hang around people who abuse you or hurt you. But when your enemy is hungry, give them something to eat. Don't be overcome by evil. But overcome evil by complaining on Facebook. <laughs> don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with what? Good. Good. As you're posting this week... I would like you to use that as your evaluation tool, please. Don't be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Good. Very good. Romans 12, 20, 21. Number four, last but not least, if you don't hear anything else today, listen to this. Surrender to his leadership and authority. 
Christianity is upside down. Christianity is absolutely upside down. You win by losing. You win by surrender. You gain by losing. Some of you are trying to control your life and other people's lives and everybody around you's life. And it's time. You ready? It's time to give up. And give it to Christ. Because only then can you have the power. Listen to what it says here. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands and his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes. They have victory. They fight. It's a battle. They overcome the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Even our faith. You know what faith is? Faith is saying, I can't do it. I can't put faith in myself anymore. But Jesus, I trust you. And as I walk through this life and I'm a blessing to other people and I do what you want me to do, I trust you. Who is that overcomes the world? Only he, only the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God. If you're here today and you've never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, the Bible says that we're, we all sinned. Everybody knows that. There's nobody in here who goes, not me. We've all sinned, the Bible says, and fallen short of God's glorious ideal is one of the things. It's short of the glory of God. We, we won't be like God. But that's why he sent Jesus to die on the cross for us to take our sins. And if you're here today and you've never surrendered your life to him, today you can say, I'm, I'm tired of living the way I'm living. I'm tired of trying to control everything I'm, myself. I'm surrendering my life to you. And I'll be here after the service. And you can say, Eric, I want to give my life to Christ today. Would you pray with me? Can I talk to you in a minute? Maybe you're here today and you're a Christian, but truth be known, there's some areas of your life that you've taken back. You had surrendered them at one time, but now you've taken them back and said, I'll, I'll take this back. God, I can handle this. And you're starting to realize you can't. You don't do it well. So today's the day of surrender for you too. He has not forgotten you. But there's times that you have to say, God, I just can't do it. I trust you. When you do that, he will use you to be a blessing. The pressure will be off. And you'll understand it's by grace you're saved through faith. Not of works, not by a bunch of stuff you do, but because you've surrendered to him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer today. Father, thank you for today. Lord, I pray in just a few hours as people come to, to um, play with their children and they bring them here. Father, that many who've been away from church for a long time will begin to see the truth that you're real. To see that you love them and care about them. Father, I pray this afternoon would be a place as we serve and, and we build relationships with each other. We also could build relationships with our community. Father, I pray for that one here today who's never surrendered their life to you. That today would be the day that they give up. That they realize that they need you. And today would be the day of surrender. And Father, I also ask for that one today who's a Christian. But they've been fighting. They've been holding on to things. Lord, they've been struggling with their thinking and worry and criticism. Father, I want to pray that today would be the day they surrender that to you and ask you to take over that part of their lives. Father, we trust you. We trust you for the future. We trust you for what's next. And Father, I thank you that you have not forgotten a single one here today. You know their name. Father, as we worship you, remind us of your love for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to have our time of giving in just a moment. Listen, you give what God's put on your heart today. He's blessed us with these great videos and so many things we get to do. And then I want to encourage you also, later today, when we have our time, just come, even if you're not serving today, come at 2 or 3 o'clock and just see what's going on. Come and be a blessing to our community. See what happens here. It's amazing.